Dear students, welcome and thank you for joining in. We are continuing our discussion of the product architecture. And in this video, we're going to start establishing the architecture of our products. We will be establishing the architecture in general, and then we're going to implement this method in the product that you are developing right now. So we are still working in the product design development course. For establishing the architecture, it's very important for everybody to understand that the outcomes of this process or this stage in the product design development, which is the product architecture is very important it affects a lot of things in our process in the development and the manufacturing and the outcomes of it uh, should be very important outcomes in order to achieve this process we need to make sure that everybody understands that this is a cross-functional effort by the development team and our outcomes will be three outcomes three main outcomes the first one is an approximate geometrical layout of the product and the second outcome is the major chunks identification of the major chunks of our product and the th and chunks is a collection of components or parts that uh, perform a particular function and the third outcome is a documentation of the key interactions among the identified chunks. In order to do this process, we go into implement a method. This method is in order to establish the architectural decision process. How are we deciding on what kind of architecture, what is the layout that we're going to be using? And this method or process has four steps. Remember all the time that we are doing uh, structured processes for the big picture, which is designing and developing a functional product in the prototype. So these four steps for, the st for establishing the architecture are one, creating a schematic of the product, two, uh, cluster the elements of the sch uh, schematic, um, the description, how to cluster them together into chunks, and three, creating a rough geometrical layout of how would the product look like uh, after identifying the chunks, which are the parts of the product, and fourth, identifying the fundamental and incidental uh, interactions among the, ch the separate chunks or the uh, different chunks of the product. We're going to uh, discuss each of these uh, steps one by one, and we are going to try to apply them for our product, the one that we are uh, developing, the for you group project. So let's start with the first um, step. So our first step is to create a schematic of the product. And schematic is a diagram representing the uh, team's understanding of the constituents constituent elements of the product, how the team perceives their product, uh, and this is a general layout. Now, the, uh, in order to do this, uh, the elements of the, you can find a lot of different elements uh, of the, if you, of the schema, of your product and you can put them in, in a schematic representation. We're going to use the DeskJet printer uh, as an example of how can we create this schematic. And you can see we have a lot of boxes uh, in the image that you can you, can, you see on the screen. And you can look at these, each, each box of them, and you can understand that we are getting this from our functional diagrams that we have described before uh, when we uh, generated the concepts, our different, the many different concepts that we've generated for the product or the pro for, uh, for the project that we are working on and also it comes from the decomposition of um, each of those um, you know functional diagrams so remember that we have we discussed if you can uh, look at this corner this is the functional or f uh, physical element and if you remember from the functional diagrams you have the energy you have the material and you have the signal and you need to use you the whatever you um, developed before for the concept that you your team have selected in order to create this big uh, picture and this big uh, diagram or schematic diagram of the um, product now please note that each of these boxes uh, they, they're not all similar some of them uh, can be characterized as concepts pure concepts some of them are critical components for example the printer cartridge uh, so this is a component, it's not a concept. Uh, but some of them, do you have like physical concepts such as the front in, front out paper path? Uh, and that is um, a description of a concept, how things are going to get in and get out. So we can do concepts and we can do elements, physical uh, elements actually. 
and also we can have also described only a functionality uh, so there are some functional element that they have not been reduced to physical concept or components and that's fine and if you remember we did something called functional decomposition which said that we can we can follow uh, or describe the functionality or the use of the product we can follow this and we can still describe it as boxes here without saying what is what is the element what is the technology that you we want uh, to use and that's fine at this stage so keep in mind uh, elements reduced to physical concept or components that's important but it should not have should not think of all of them like this that have been reduced to that to a specific uh, component or element so i would urge each group of you guys is to create something similar to their concept to their product that they're going to develop and rely on the functional uh, diagrams and the decomposition that process we did bef we uh, worked on before and to describe it in more details so that everybody can have an idea about what you're thinking of or how your team is understanding the concept or the product now uh, it's important to understand that uh, the schema should reflect the team understanding and we need to uh, make sure that we aim to have fewer than 30 of these boxes um, that can describe our concept and also be, make sure uh, understand the schematic created will not be unique and we urge each group to, mul uh, to create multiple alternatives uh, of such schematics in order to understand the whole concepts and um, make sure that we uh, encompassate or encompass all the uh, different varieties so this is a, a, a time in, uh, and labor intensive process but it's very important to now create our schematic and this is the first part of and um, creating your structure and architecture of your uh, component so now we need to uh, have um, after you've created a lot of concepts, you have uh, selected a couple of these concepts uh, based on screening and scoring, and then you have uh, tested the concepts for, and got feedback from the end users who selected one of them. Now, once that has been selected and now you're down to only one concept, you need to create this schematic for your product. Again, keep in mind, these boxes can be concepts, they can be components, physical components, and they can be just functionality. Uh, so it's important to have this in mind, and you don't have to have everything reduced to a physical component or an element. I hope that's helpful to understand the first step in creating and establishing the architecture. Uh, thank you for watching. Until next video.